Monsters, meanwhile, breaking it out. Dean Strong, right side, Paul Carey. He'll try and turn the corner in on the goal. Carey, a shot, and he scores! Top shelf, and the Monsters take a 1-0 lead. Tyson Berry, weaving through center, off to the left side. Splits the Grand Rapids D up the wing now, and into the offensive end he goes. Centers one out front, and they score! The captain, Brian Lurg! A great look from Berry, and it's one-time home by Lurg, and we're all tied up at five. Back out to the right point for Berry. Into the right circle, over. Down behind the net from Malone. Scoots off to the right side, touches the circle. Barry, one-timer save, made the rebound. Thomas, and he scores! Bill Thomas, a power play goal. Picking up the rebound. 4 nothing Monsters. Back down for Thomas in the circle. Center point, Barry across. One-timer, Stoller, and he scores! And the Monsters have won it in overtime. Taken away by Mitchell Hurd from the slot. A shot, and he scores! Top shelf! First pro goal for Mitchell Hurd upstairs, and the Monsters take a 3-0 lead. And Dean Strong will look quickly to the left for Barry Goers. Up the wing for Luke Walker. Walker, top of the left circle, tees one up, and he scores! Luke Walker a blast, and he beats Morazic. 1-0 Monsters. Perry back up high, Billings a one-timer, and the puck's loose. What a save by Pickard on that rebound opportunity from Brett Skinner. Calvin Pickard, cue up the highlight reel. And here he is in the shootout, moving in for the Monsters. Delays in front, backhand, and he scores. Top shelf, Brian Lurg, and the Monsters draw first blood in the shootout. Gaunt across the line, Elliott right point, nice move, walks in, top of the right circle, backhand shot, Penn save the rebound, and they score! On the doorstep, Patrick Bordalo, and the Monsters have taken a 3-2 lead. Up to the Abbotsford line, we're back to five on five, Berchi out of the box, a wind up from Scarbosa, a shot, and he scores! And the Monsters tie it up at three. Nyquist going in alone, Nyquist walks in, a shot, what a glove save made by Kelvin Pickard on Gustav Nyquist. And the Monsters will look to break it out here, Vander Gulick, long pass, Agazino right side, Agazino right circle, a shot, and he scores! A wrist dirty, beat Morazic, glove side, and Andrew Agazino has given the Monsters a 2-0 lead. Took a bounce off the end boards, caught up two, and a big hit delivered on Palmer that time by Scarbosa, he laid him out on the board. Couple of rookies going back and forth, some rights from Tenorti. Hurd trying to get his right hand free. Tenorti expending a lot of energy here, trying to go upstairs on Mitchell Hurd. Hurd now trying to get that arm free, a right jab. Now a couple of left jabs right to the mandible of Tenorti. And now Tenorti trying to counter with some rights over the top. The Monsters forward and the defenseman for the Bulldogs continuing to take their time here. And Hurd now a right hand connecting upstairs. An uppercut right to the jaw of Tenorti knocks the helmet free. Mitchell Hurd and Jared Tenorti. And now Tenorti up top with an uppercut. A couple of left jabs now from Hurd as this one continues. A marathon bout between these two and they are eventually separated. Good evening and welcome inside Quicken Loans Arena here in downtown Cleveland, Ohio. The Lake Erie Monsters and their rivals from the state of Michigan, the Grand Rapids Griffins, for the second time in as many nights. Welcome everybody, Doug Plagans here alongside my broadcast partner tonight, Jock Callender. And Jock, last night no different than the previous meetings, another tight one when the Monsters play the Griffins. Yeah, it's always, always tight and exciting. Grand Rapids has a very skilled and fast team, as the Monsters do, so it makes for exciting hockey. Last night, the Monsters prevailed 4-3 in a shootout. We'll take a look at some of the highlights from last night. The Monsters fell behind by a pair in the first period, but fought back. Sean Sullivan, late in the first, a shot from the point, found its way through. Jeff Walker on the tip. That pulled the Monsters to within a goal, made it 2-1. to one. Then later on, it was in the second period, the Monsters would knot it up. Carl Stollery's point shot was tipped by Bill Thomas. The Monsters tied it up at two. That one in the second period of play. In the third, Landon Ferraro scored to regain the lead for Grand Rapids from the left circle on a wrister. The Monsters would tie it up, though, in the third period in the shootout. Things got dramatic when Joey Hishin walked in and netted the shootout winner. After that, it was up to Sammy Itacalio to slam the door, and well, he did that. Francis Perez scored in regulation, but couldn't do it in the shootout for Grand Rapids. Itacalio made the big save. The Monsters got the two points and a big road win for the Monsters last night. Definitely. The Monsters have been struggling as of late, and they needed that victory to get things back on, on the right track. Last night, the Monsters picked up a 4-3 shootout win over Grand Rapids, and Jock, as we move into your keys to the game, the physical play, a big reason for it. Yeah, definitely. The Monsters picked up the physical play last night in the second period. Fell behind early, but picked up the physical play. They got a four-check, take the body, and that leads to offense. They got to stop the odd number of attacks. We got to keep a third man high, 
in the offensive zone so that Grand Rapids can't use their skill. And then special teams, the power play has been good as of late, and the PK has to be good tonight because of Grand Rapids' skill. Power play has certainly helped the Monsters as of late. They'll look for the penalty kill success as well. Folks, it's the Monsters and the Griffins coming up. We'll hear from Monsters head coach Dean Chenout straight ahead. Scores from around the league, the Discount Drug Mart out of town scoreboard. Discount Drug Mart, the stores that save you the runaround. Adirondack, 3-0 over Norfolk after two in the second period. How about the Oklahoma City Barons? 2-0 over the Rochester Americans down in Oklahoma. 1-1 between Grand Rapids and Peoria in the second period. Also in the middle frame, San Antonio 2, Texas 1 in Cedar Park, Texas tonight as a big South Division battle gets underway. 2-1 Toronto leads the Monsters who are looking for a big penalty kill to start the third period here. John can imagine that's first order of business. You've got to kill this thing off. Yeah, kill and go from there and then get get pucks to the net like we, we've been talking our, up here. Need to get more pucks than that. When we do, we're getting making things happen. And then when we get fancy, nothing happens and it stagnates the offense. So kill this off, take that energy, and go on and go on and get some offense here. Monsters got the most recent explosion of offense when they scored in the second period to make it a 2-1 game. And not long thereafter, David Vandergoat came just inches away from tying the game. Drew McIntyre was able to close it off with a big left hand save. But the Monsters have come close. This very well could be a tie game, but some goaltending has it at a 2-1 score at this point. And Sammy Adekali, I don't want to take anything away from him. He's made some huge saves in this game for the Monsters, mainly back in the early portions of the first when the Monsters had to do some penalty killing of their own for an extended period of time. Off the faceoff to start the period, Carl Staller immediately deposits one right into the Toronto bench for a stoppage five seconds in. Let's go down to the third member of our broadcast team. Here's Kenny Rhoda. Thanks, Doug. I actually talked with assistant coach David Oliver, and Ollie told me that they need to do more of the same, get as many pucks to the net as they possibly can, get more shots on goal, and play solid D here and tie this thing up and see where it goes from there, guys. Thanks very much, Kenny. Down at rinkside, Doug Plagans, Jock Callender up here with you. Well, Toronto's got all their big guns, Colburn, Connolly, Zigamanis, Hamilton, and Ranger to start this power play. They almost got a full full two minutes to start with fresh ice. Well, you see this quite a bit from Dallas Aikens. He likes to go for it all on these power plays, and he does have this loaded up with all the big guns for Toronto. Tim Connolly on the left side. Connolly down to the left wing corner. Puck inside the Monsters zone. Ranger off the left. Puck taken there by Zygamanis. Back down low for Connolly. Through the left circle. Center of the point. It's Ranger left side now. It's Connolly working down low with it, trying to peel away from Agazino. Out to the left point, Ranger. Ranger across the line, Colburn, top of the right circle, floats one back across, that'll be fielded off the boards by Connolly, pressure from Magazino, knocked him over, Sotheby on the clear, and a foot race back, Ranger will get there, Sotheby tying him up, the Toronto Marlies 26-0-1-1 when leading after two periods of play, so they know how to play with a lead, Monsters almost were able to put a little blemish on that the other night when they tied one up in the third period and nearly completed their comeback, but the comeback did eventually fall short. Toronto trying to break it up the ice. Vandergulik doing a number here short-handed, just bottling up this Toronto power play. As Sullivan now fires one in from the point. Monsters keeping it in the offensive end as they are down a man here for another 24 seconds. Great work from Vandergulik in the offensive end. Van de Grulik, we were used to seeing that all year long. From he's the epitome of work ethic. He works hard every game, every shift. And if uh, you're a young player and you can uh, play like that, you're gonna you're gonna be something someday. Work hard, always the number one thing to be a good hockey player. Grab on, fights to keep the puck right. Circle, circle. Paul Carey sent one through the top of the crease. It goes wide. Ricochets out to the neutral zone. Back to five on five. Here's Brad Ross in for Toronto. He's shoved by Maggio. Ross goes down, and Scarbosa lets a puck go behind the goal, taken away. Side of the goal, McKegg now for Ross. He sent it off the side of the net. Scarbosa continues to push it. Ross, puck loose on the side of the net, and we've got ourselves a whistle. 17.53 left in the third, 2-1 Marley's. Jock, back to your original keys to the game. What are the Monsters doing with that energy? Well, they're, I, I think, playing very well. A lot of energy, getting a lot of chances. Um, early on, caused a couple penalties. Even strength have not created any offense yet. Got, getting some chances but have not put one behind McIntyre and defending they have uh, the second goal was a little breakdown in the defensive zone 
Marshall across, Geispers right point, Toronto in the offensive end here. Down behind the net. Acton onto the right side. Into the corner, puck taken by Domingo. Jerry Domingo, two goals on Sunday. Both in the final two minutes of the game, back up to Marshall, a shot off the mark. And the puck goes into the corner, grabbed by Domingo. Domingo shuttles one back down along the left side board. Handled there on the board by Ryan. Kenny Ryan, he's hauled down. Maggio's going to be going to the box here. He got an arm up, and that was all it took that time. And Maggio's going to go off for two minutes. So again, we see the Monsters allowing Toronto an opportunity with the man advantage. And when you're a big guy like Maggio and you get your arm up a little bit, it doesn't take much to land in the box. And that's what happened right there. Well, Toronto's uh, very good at diving. They, they dove there, and they dove in the last penalty with Ross. It was in the crease. We saw the replay of that one. And uh, monsters need to learn from that, and maybe, maybe dive themselves once in a while. It's a shame that hockey has come to that over the over the years, but uh, the players can really, really fool the refs nowadays. Following the draw, the Marlies will work it around. They're back onto a five-on-four power play. Puck down inside the Monsters zone. Zygmatis, right corner, Colburn. Back up top for Ranger. Right half wall, Colburn marches in. Wrist shot, he got that off in a hurry. And the puck takes a bounce off the glass. Zygmatis out to the line. Connolly, center of the blue line. Ranger right side, Colburn. Side of the net, Hamilton. Puck just rolled away on him. Good play from Agazino to get in there and jar it free, but the Monsters can't clear. Connolly across, Colburn tees it up, shot, and he scores. Well, puck was moved from side to side. Colburn just threw it at the net. I'll we'll tell you what, Tim Connolly can pass the puck. Yeah, he's, he played in the NHL for a reason, and uh, that is the reason right there. He put it right on the tape, and that was a saucer pass right on the tape of Colburn. And I was just going to make a comment about Joe Colburn, and he came off an injury in the offseason, has worked his way back. He's taken on an elevated role in the offense, and. He's a six foot five inch centerman, a former first round pick, and Toronto willing to be very patient with him to really get things going this year. And for a guy who's six five, he's able to pull off moves with the quickness of a guy maybe six feet tall, yeah, a smaller he's, guy. He's got the good hands to go along with that big frame. Yeah, he's got good skill. I and mean, he, he took off at the start of last year. Um, the, 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 the knock on him is he, he doesn't like the, the, physical, the physical play. Although he did play well in the playoffs last year, which is usually a more physical brand of hockey. Go play right up the gut. Puck bounces off McNeely to Jeff Walker. Walker run into, and the puck tossed out into the neutral zone up the left side. It's Greg McKegg. McKegg on the wing, and he'll take a shove from McNeely. Puck loose along the board, sent back down low. Lash run into by Sullivan. Puck still loose. Maybe a two on two back the other way. Could it be a three on two? Jeff Walker and Joey Hishin moving to the offensive end. Hishin had that puck bounce away on him, and back come the Marlies now. A two on two. Lash up the left side. He lost the puck, and Negrin quick to pounce on it. Good play there from John Negrin. Puck goes back in behind the Monsters goal. Takes an odd bounce out in front. Paul Carey will find it. Carey turns on his Jets up the left wing. Can he burn around the defender? Geisbers through the circle, and the puck just rolled into the Good corner. Stick on Paul Carey. Good stick by Geisbers there. Paul Carey trying to drive wide. Colburn from Connolly and Hamilton at 3-11 of the third is the goal that has made this a 3-1 game on the power play for Toronto. Into the corner now, a battle, and Carey will find it out to the high slot. Scalbosa, one time boy, did he get that off in a hurry, and the kick save was made by McIntyre. Out of the board, Scarbosa again. He's flying around out there. Puck goes across, left circle. Stollery working down to the corner. Played back down behind the net. It goes over the stick of Paul Carey. Loose into the corner to the left of McIntyre. And the Marlies will work it around their own end. They get a clear off the short glass from Geispers. And that's going to be a roller all the way down. Maggio to play it. And the whistle blows, icing against Toronto. 14-47 left here in the third. 3-1. The Marlies in front. Mike Scarbosa unleashed a heck of a shot right there. That's one thing about the game of Mike Scarbosa. He can make passes. He can make the moves that can take you out of your seat. He can also pick his spot and just fire a shot like a sniper. He's got yeah. a lot of those tools on offense. Yeah, he's got a lot of action. He's got a good one-timer. His not not a, a bomb of a shot, but a very accurate shot. Toronto calls their timeout. There, they were exhausted there. 
A good timeout called by Dallas Eakin with a 3-1 lead with 15 minutes left. You don't, can't take that timeout home with you, so you might as well use it when you when you can. Dallas Eakin's giving his guys a little chance for a breather. Hockey fans, subscribe now to AHL Live and watch live coverage of every AHL game this season. Only available at AHLLive.com. Follow your favorite team at home or on the road. Replay any game you want from the AHL Live archives. Get free game highlights and team coverage from around the league. Subscribe now at AHLLive.com and never miss another game great way to keep up to speed with everything going on across the American Hockey League. Very cool features. You can go on there. You can watch highlights of all the previous night's games. You can see what's going on across the league. And the Monsters will be on the road in Grand Rapids on Friday. Wouldn't that be a good night to try out AHLLive.com? Should be an exciting game. Griffin's one of the stronger teams in the AHL. And they just got Gustav Nyquist reassigned from the Detroit Red Wings. So he and Tomas Tatar in the Griffins lineup. Shot from the right circle now goes wide off the stick of Luke Walker and it carries back out to the neutral zone. Interesting to see Tatar back. It's, he was playing very well in Detroit and had some highlight goals. Huck out front from Negren and the Monsters rush unable to pick up possession. Luke Walker deposits one into the corner right wing side. Connolly. Out to the right point, into the right circle, Vandergulen back up for Gabe Beaupre, a shot, he can't bang it through, off a of bounce, Kevin Marshall has it, looking long, he can't find Ryan Hamilton, puck skips all the way down and around, Herrick there to play it for Toronto, no icing call, it's waved off as Toronto touched up, shot from the right point, Tim Connolly, that goes out of play, 14-0 to go, third period, 3-1, it's Toronto on top of the Monsters, the lone goal here in the third, coming off the stick of Toronto's Joe Colburn. Eric was brave to go there as, as Maggio was coming over full tilt and just missed a big hit on Carrick there. Carrick had saved, saved the Mar uh, Marlies from an icing. Carrick, a guy who's played the bulk of the season in the ECHL with Idaho, and he's seeing time in this game playing with guys like Ryan Hamilton. Huck played all the way down. Jesse Blacker into the corner for Brad Ross. Right out to the line, intercepted by Sullivan, a shot from the Monsters defenseman. Ricochets out of play for another whistle and an official timeout. 13.46 left in the third, 3-1. It's Toronto on top of the Monsters, who've given up one here in the third. We'll see if they can fight back when we come back on the Monsters Hockey Network. Thirteen forty-six left in the third. Three-one Toronto on top. Next Wednesday is Superhero Night here. The Q and the Cavs take on the Boston Celtics. All kids fourteen and under get a Cavs superhero cape. Great seats are going fast, so get yours tonight by calling 800-820 Cavs. Visit a Northern Ohio discount drug mart or go to Cavs.com. Jock, when was the last time you threw a cape on? <laughs> I don't know if I've ever had a cape on. To tell you the truth. I don't think I have either. I'll be at the Cavs game tomorrow night. My son Pearson loves basketball, and uh, we're going to go see the Cavs uh, put an end to the Miami Heat streak. Tell you what, that'd be something if they could pull that off tomorrow. Somebody has to do it at some point. Can't go on forever. Dan Maggio back inside the monster zone, off to the left for Sean Sullivan. Up the left side for Ryan Sotheby. Sotheby turns one into the offensive zone. Puck goes down low. Paul Ranger fires it right back the other way out to center. 13-23 left here in the third. 3-1 is the score. Toronto on top of the monster. Right point, Bill Thomas. Puck handled there, and it looks like we've got ourselves a whistle for offside against the Monsters. Close call there. Bill Thomas questioning the linesman. So following that whistle, We'll have a face-off coming just beyond the Toronto line. Shots on net. How about that? 30 to 19. The Monsters really racked up a big lead in the shot department in that second period with the help from those power plays. Drew McIntyre has 29 saves. That's the one problem. Yes, McIntyre having another strong performance. Toronto's going to be happy that he came back from Russia. Three leagues this year he's played in. Yeah, they, the, the Marlies were reeling um, at the time he, he rejoined them. And now they've got everything straightened out, but they were, like every team, you know, going through a funk. Whether or not they could have got out of, with uh, McIntyre or not. Jeff Walker plays one down. Joey Hishon on the four check. He shovels one over to McNeely, out to the high slot. Negrin, a shot, it goes wide. Hishon battles for it. Puck in the air, into the corner. Hishon rubbed off the puck by Grimshaw. Backhanded ahead. Greg Scott the clear. Stollery to the left for Negrin. Negrin dumps one down to the offensive end. D'Amigo 
He'll grab it, and Jerry D'Amigo will wheel ahead. UC Runas had a hot start to the year, but Ben Scrivens was also in Toronto, so Scrivens was really the number one guy. Scrivens goes up, and then it becomes a little bit of a who's going to be the number one guy situation as Joey Hishin rips one in, and a routine save is made by McIntyre, who kicks it away. Huck loose on the boards, and Paul Carey will dig for it. Shovel down low, Brad Malone hit. Huck darts out in front, McIntyre. He'll cover up. 12-15 to go here in the third. 3-1. It's Toronto on top. A look at Drew McIntyre there. But Joey Hish, another shot on net on that sequence. And one other thing that we didn't talk about as much with him, but he spent a lot of time around the Monsters while he was making his way back. And he's a guy who really was able to stay a supportive teammate and just be a great guy to have around even when he wasn't medically cleared to play yet. Yeah, he was around. and He, he was skating. He'd go out before practice, before he was cleared to come on to practice. He's been practicing with the team for quite a while. Malone out front of shot, it just goes high as Malone came up with a puck in front of the goal. It went high of the Toronto net and the Marlies will work it ahead. Ryan Hamilton with it in his skates. Malone, a good hustle play to keep it in the offensive end. Puck down behind the goal, Marshall wraps it around and the puck tossed out by Geispers all the way down. Well, that's one thing about Joey, I said earlier, he's a fan of the game and I, uh, he, he, he studies the game, he knows players, the past players, guys in the NHL, like, this generation is different than, than my generation where we knew every every player and, and every team and stuff. This generation isn't as, as focused on, on past players and stuff as uh, as we were. Um, and, but Joey Hishin is a throwback. He knows uh, knows a little bit about everyone. Herrick from the right side, a shot knocked away by Sammy Adekalio. Stollery up the right side, puck handled by Luke Walker, and chopped down into the offensive end. Jesse Blacker wrapped around the end boards. Luke Walker out to the line. Dan Maggio a shot, can't bang it through. Sam Carrick with it, bank pass up into the neutral zone. It gets by D'Amigo, and that'll be hauled in by Negrin. Negran up the left side, try to make a move, puck rolled free, and Toronto sends it back the other way. Sullivan backtracking for it into the Monsters zone. Sullivan, long outlet feed for Vandergulik. He'll reel it in, plays it along the boards. Dylan Yo gave it away, Bill Thomas behind the net, out in front, and the puck is chopped away. And all the way down, Negrin in a foot race against Brad Ross. They converge on it. Ross tapped it toward the Monsters goal line. Acalio forced to make a bit of a routine save there. Negrin will slap it around, and it's going to be Mike Connolly looking for it on the wall. Can't come up with it, though. Back in comes Colburn into the corner, sent around, and that'll be intercepted by Sotheby as Colburn was looking to ride it around the end boards out to the point, perhaps. It didn't get there. Back down inside the Toronto zone. Looking long as Zygamanis, that's going to go long and all the way down the ice, not far enough for an icing as Stollery will find it. Carl Stollery backhanded into the corner, Beaupre in behind the net, now off to the corner. Stollery looks ahead, rink wide pass. Bill Thomas swats the airborne puck into the offensive end. Marshall onto the right for Geispers. Geispers up the wing for Kenny Ryan. Puck tipped inside the Monsters zone. Stollery will find it in the trapezoid. Pressure from Greg McKegg. McKegg frees up the puck. It's grabbed by Ryan Lash. Back down to the corner for McKegg. McKegg there. Drops it off for Lash once more. He's bumped by Gabe Beaupre. Lash staying with it. Beaupre takes Lash down. Beaupre grabbing the puck now. And he'll move back in toward the... Trapezoid behind his own net, up the right side for McNeely, a pass, and McNeely clears. Sent back into the monster zone by Marshall, and Beaupre will find it. Gabe Beaupre on to the left for Stollery. Carl Stollery, long pass ahead off a stick and out of play. 9.23 to go in the third. 3-1, it's Toronto on top of the Monsters. Monsters out shooting the Marlies by 10, but again, a two-goal lead for Toronto on the scoreboard. Monsters with less than half a period to fight back on the Monsters Hockey Network.